The top-ranked Kentucky Wildcats begin their road to the Final Four in Louisville, and scoring a ticket may be tough. We're live on UK's campus where students have their best shot today. It has been an absolutely gorgeous start to the work week. Highs in the 70s, but we're about to crash as we head toward midweek. I'll track that change coming up. Also ahead, hundreds of people paying respects to the family of a police officer who died in the line of duty. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. It is a beautiful day across the bluegrass. Lots of sunshine and temperatures in the 70s. You're looking live at Thoroughbred Park in downtown where it's 73 degrees this afternoon. But will it last? Meteorologist Jim Caldwell has a first look at the forecast. And Jim, what a way to start the week. You know, if we could start every Monday like this, Monday wouldn't be that bad at all. But we are going to start to cruise back down the old thermometer as we head toward midweek. Out there right now, we look all across Kentucky. You saw the shot there from downtown. Town. We are looking now at Richmond, Frankfurt, Jackson, and of course along the interstate here in Lexington. And anywhere you go, you're going to find a little mix of sun and clouds that have been filtering through the area all day long. Warmest spot, Jackson, 76 degrees. Now think about that. We're almost getting closer to the 80 degree mark. We're making a run at it out there today. Unfortunately, these warm temperatures will start to disappear. It's going to be, we're, we'll start tracking it right here on Defender tomorrow. When you start tracking those showers, there's a frontal boundary that's associated with them tomorrow, and it will likely drift in here from our northwest, where we're seeing a lot of that cloud cover already showing up throughout the entire area. So that's going to be our big change as we start to work our way into the day tomorrow, and especially toward midweek. Much cooler. How about we replace these 70s with 40s? That's what's coming, Jennifer, and I will track all of it coming up here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Jim. The Big Blue Nation is buzzing about March Madness. The undefeated Kentucky Wildcats brought home their 28th SEC tournament title and claimed the overall number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Cats fans won't have to travel far for the first round of the tournament. They'll be in Louisville, but getting a ticket won't be as easy. Kristen Kennedy is live at the student ticket lottery on UK's campus with our top story at four. Kristen? Jennifer, if you don't have your ticket yet, good luck getting one. Students are now live. Lining up inside the ticket office at Memorial Coliseum, hoping that they are one of those lucky few that will get the about 100 tickets that UK has allotted to them for students to go watch the Cats play in Louisville. Doors to the ticket office opened at 4 o'clock, and at 5 o'clock, those tickets will go out to students. We're expecting that lottery drawing to go very quickly here, considering the popularity of UK playing for national championship number nine, and considering the proximity of where they're playing in Louisville. It will be a quick trip for a lot of students and fans. It's an even shorter distance than this past weekend's SEC tournament trip in Nashville. And even in Music City, there is a tremendous amount of blue and white. What amazed me when I walked the streets in Nashville is the thousands of people who were there who did not have tickets. They just wanted to be part of it. In a little less than an hour, students will find out if they are one of those lucky ones that receives a ticket to go see the Cats play in Louisville. Live on campus, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. If you're not a student and still looking for tickets, the Better Business Bureau recommends purchasing them through the NCAA's approved secondary ticket marketplace. You can find a link to that on the NCAA's website. And with the Cats the number one seed in the Midwest region and the overall number one, they open play at the Yum Center in Louisville Thursday night. It's a late one against the winner of the first round game, Hampton versus Manhattan. The Jaspers are coached by former Wildcat Steve Masiello. Tip off is set for 9:40 Thursday night, and you can see the game live right here on WKYT. Family, friends, and fellow officers are saying final goodbyes today to a Central Kentucky police officer who died in the line of duty. Nicholasville officer Burke Rhodes was headed to training last week when he died in a crash on U.S. 27 in Garrett County. Earlier today, hundreds of people, many of them in uniform, paid their respects during a visitation at Southland Christian Church. A second visitation began about an hour ago and goes until 8 tonight. Rhodes is survived by his wife and three children. His funeral is tomorrow at noon. Then the U.S. Army veteran will be buried at Camp Nelson Cemetery. 
We'll have more coming up at 5. We're working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. Work is underway right now to identify human remains found in southern Kentucky. Two fishermen made the discovery yesterday near Happy Hollow Road in Whitley County. The sheriff's office is back on the scene right now searching for more remains. They're also contacting police departments across the area about missing persons cases. The state crime lab is is examining the remains found. We'll have an update on their investigation coming up on WKYT News at 4:30. An investigation is underway after flyers were found in the Lexington neighborhood. Those flyers were discovered on cars, doors, and in mailboxes of homes on Niles Drive near Appian Way and Armstrong Mill. The flyers promote a strong message about heaven and hell. Police are now trying to figure out if these flyers are a form of harassment or just free speech. You have to show love. First, show love. And this, if they came and they showed a smile or show some type of love, or that would have been more acceptable. And you have to do that. And sometimes you have to give people things. Give us a free track or just give us a, something that is more tangible than just a sheet of paper just saying what you want to do. And to the middle of the night, it is offensive. Police tell us this will become a harassment case if specific threats were made. We're told they are still looking into it. We'll have an update on WKYT News at 5. And the State Transportation Department is out today working to fix roadways hit hard by winter weather. They're doing pothole repairs on New Circle Road. That work is being done in both the inner and outer loops between Versailles Road and the Nicholasville Road exits. Potholes are also being fixed between Nicholasville Road and Richmond Road. You're going to hear from drivers about the pothole problems coming up. Up on WKYT News at 5:30. That is a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Now to stories making headlines across the nation at four. Week three of the Boston Marathon bomber trial began with jurors taking a field trip to view evidence. Jokar Sarnaya faces dozens of federal charges for the bombings that killed three people and injured hundreds near the finish line of the 2013 Boston Marathon. Marley Hall has the latest from Boston. Jurors inspected the boat where Jahar Sarnayev hid before authorities captured him. Two pool reporters accompanied the jurors on their field trip to an undisclosed location in South Boston. We observed at least 110 bullet holes, obvious bullet holes in the boat. Jurors also saw the notes Sarnayev scrawled in pencil inside the boat. It was very faded, written in pencil, and the blood streaks that we saw in photos last week was very faded and was just a light brown at this point. The reporter said Sarnayev was unshackled and did not display any emotion as he watched the jurors. Mr. Sarnayev was sitting flanked by his, his attorneys at a table under a white pop up tent. By mid morning, the jurors were back here at the federal courthouse where they heard testimony about what happened before Jahar Sarnayev was captured. Three Watertown police officers described the final hours of the four day manhunt. Police officer Joseph Reynolds testified the Sarnayev brothers fired at him for up to nine minutes before they threw pipe bombs. Sergeant John McClellan told jurors he feared he would die. The gunfight ended when Jahar Sarnayev sped off in a stolen black Mercedes. In his haste, he ran over his brother, who had been wounded in a shootout with police. Marley Hall, CBS News, Boston. And defense attorneys for Sarnayev hope to spare him the death penalty by proving he played a secondary role to his brother, who they say masterminded the attacks. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is meeting with his Iranian counterpart in Switzerland today for the latest rounds of talks on Iran's nuclear program. It's their first meeting since 47 Republicans sent a controversial letter to Iran's leaders warning them that any nuclear agreement could expire the day President Barack Obama leaves office. Iran negotiators reportedly confronted American officials about the letter during today's meeting. World leaders have set an end of March deadline to agree on a framework for the final deal in June. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Stocks rally as the Dow jumps triple digits and oil prices continue to fall. The Dow picked up 228 points to close at 17,977. The Nasdaq added 58 and the S&P 28.
The IRS is warning about a new tax scam where tax preparers use Obamacare to pocket fines they're charging some taxpayers, many of them immigrants. Preparers claim they need to collect a fine related to the health care law. But in reality, the taxpayers don't owe any money because they have insurance or Medicaid. The IRS reminds people that if you do legitimately owe money, payments should be made only with a tax return or in response to a letter from the agency. After rising for more than a month, gas prices have now dropped nine days in a row. AAA predicts that downward trend will continue well into the busy summer season. Terry Okita finds out why gas prices have been all over the map this past year. LA delivery service owner Saul Yamini has been on a roller coaster ride in recent months with erratic gas prices. It's a domino effect. When gas prices go up, it's like boom, 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 everything goes up. That includes goods and vendor costs. But when pump prices dropped for a record 123 straight days, it also saved his business tens of thousands of dollars. Everything became better, and our overall bottom line, you know, our net was higher. AAA predicts consumers could now see average gas prices drop as low as $2 a gallon nationwide this spring and summer, thanks to an abundance of crude oil on the market. There's a good chance that the average U.S. household is going to save more than $700 on gasoline this year. Yamini pays as much as $40,000 a year on gas for his fleet. So the latest plunge is welcome news for his delivery men and his bottom line. Terry Okita for CBS News, Los Angeles. Right now, the national average for gas is $2.42 a gallon. That's $1.10 less than what Americans paid last year at this time. The NCAA men's college basketball tournament starts this week, and that means lost productivity at companies across the country. The outplacement firm Challenger Gray in Christmas says this year's tournament could cost companies nearly $2 billion. That's due to lost wages paid to workers distracted by all the basketball action. A 2012 survey found 86% of American workers devote part of their workday to all things tournament. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are just a few hours away now, actually less than a few hours when the doors open here at Memorial Coliseum for you to get down here and cheer on our UK hoops team. Coach Matthew Mitchell is with us, and this is very exciting for you and the team. Well, this is the day that you kind of work toward all season long. And our players started back in June, getting up very early, four mornings a week in the summer when all their classmates are sleeping in and enjoying exactly. the summer and lifting weights and running and all the practices. We practiced 130 times. And so it all ends up tonight, being able to hear your name called and go to the NCAA tournament. It's a very exciting night. I also hear that it's extra special because the possibility is great yeah. that UK could be playing at home and hosting. Well, that's why we're having the watch party here at Memorial is we're going to open that ticket office up <laughs> after we hear our name called. And I don't know how we would uh, be in a situation where we weren't playing here because of the great season the players have, um, you know, had for us. And so uh, we need you to come out. We need you to come buy tickets. We're going to get you some Papa John's pizza and some Coca-Cola. So how can you beat that? Coach Mitchell's cooking dinner, got everybody. Dinner. Yeah, got it's dinner on, planned for you tonight. It's Come on, on coach. out. Yeah. And, and Bria Goss here, our senior uh, from Indianapolis, is actually serving the Coke, right? That's right. I'll be down there with my hair done and everything. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Something. Talk about a night like tonight after an incredible season you guys have had. It, it's just like Coach said, a great feeling to after all the hard work, all the hours, all the blood, sweat, and tears that we pour in um, to this program and just having to hear our names called. It's an indescribable feeling, and we're just really excited. And we really hope to see you guys there. All right, there's your invite. Come on out. Six o'clock doors open here at Memorial Coliseum. Seven o'clock, the selection show, start, show starts. Pizza and Coke, you can't beat it. Mm -hmm. And you get to hang out with the team and cheer them on. We're all super excited for our UK Hoops team. More with Coach Mitchell and Bria Goss when we come back here at 450. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Pediatricians can play an important role when it comes to young people and smoking. Researchers in New England found early intervention can help young people quit or even avoid the habit altogether. Nearly 4 million young Americans smoke, with about 80% of them continuing into adulthood. 
Some top oncologists in the U.S. say it's time to do something about the high cost of cancer drugs. In recent years, prices for cancer treatments have jumped from about $10,000 to $100,000 a year. An article in a Mayo Clinic journal recommends lifting restrictions on imported drugs and having Medicare negotiate drug prices. A new study on people with high blood pressure suggests folic acid supplements can significantly reduce the risk of first stroke. Researchers in China tracked more than 20,000 adults with hypertension who took folic acid together with hypertension medication. Yahoo wants to let you forget your password. The company has launched a new service called On Demand Passwords. When you go to log into a Yahoo account, it will text a short password to your phone. You use that instead of your own password. Facebook is giving its more than 1 billion users more information about what kind of material is banned on the social network. The updated policy reinforces Facebook's stance against harassment, violence, bullying, criminal activity, and hate speech. Facebook users asked for clarification about what's okay to post. All 180 episodes of Seinfeld could soon be available for streaming. Sony Pictures TV is reportedly shopping the rights to digital buyers, including Hulu, Amazon, and Yahoo. The price per episode could top $500,000. For more help,